Welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This is naturally our Q&A session. You ask the tech MTB questions, we give you the answers. Uh, any questions you've got, get them into hellotech at gmbn.com or you can add them in the comments underneath this video. That's the easiest and fastest way for us to see your questions and answer them. So first question is from Cheng Tao. Um, I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, I'm planning on racing some local cross country races on my Trek Fuel. During training, I do find myself trying to reach down to lock the shock on climbs on my local trails, and I think it might be handy to have a shock lock remote system installed. Are there any recommendations for this? Um, well, to be honest, it does totally matter on what shock you have on your fuel. Uh, you haven't specified which year and which model you have. Some of the older ones had Fox shocks, some of the recent ones do in fact, and some have the Rock shocks system on there, and they're all slightly different. They've got different compression dials on there. Now, Rock shocks do do these kits available, and you can even lock the shock out using their twist lock system, which is amazing. And something with that sort of bike would work really, really well but there is a retrofit kit and a price tag that goes according with that. And the same applies to the Fox system, so there's various different options available to you. Um, again, it does matter on the shock that you have, so your best bet and your best port of call really would be to talk to a suspension tuner or your local bike shop, um, which could advise on the specifics for that one that you have. Now, if you have something, uh, for other viewers this is, you're looking into putting a a remote lockout system on a different style shock like the Fox X2. There's actually a company called Lift MTB that make a totally custom kit for this. So it's not really a stock thing. So you do have the climb switch on those shocks and someone wanted to be able to fit a, basically like using a dropper post lever or an old uh, front mech shift or something like that to basically lock out that rear shock for sprinting sections. And they offer a retrofit kit for that. It's a really specialist bit of kit, but really quite a cool system and definitely worth checking out. Okay, so this one's all the way from India. This is from Amian Mal. Hi guys, uh, this is Amian from India. I just wanted to ask you what you recommend as an entry-level mountain bike, a Polygon Siskiyou D7 or a Marin Hawk Hill. I do not have enough choices here as there's not much variety in good mountain bikes, especially for suspension. I've searched around and found there are a few that are, a few that are affordable and available, um, which I've mentioned here. Um, I also wanted to know if Polygon bikes are good and reliable. Well, firstly, both of those brands are very reliable, very reputable. So you're making a sound choice, whichever one of those you go for. And they're very similar bikes, actually. They're both 120 mil travel. They're both gonna be really playful, both fairly light as well. Now this is a Polygon on screen. I saw the Siskiyou actually, a few trade shows I've been to, saw that at Eurobike. Unbelievable for the money. They do several different models in that, from a base level all the way through to something actually quite extensive with dropper posts and everything. Um, I don't know how they make their bikes so good for the money. It's phenomenal, definitely worth looking at. If it's available to you, that is a sound choice, that's for sure. And the Marin, of course, or the Marin, um, really cool. You've got to think the Marin bikes, take the name for Marin or Marin County, arguably that's the birth of mountain biking. So although the bikes are very similar on geometry on paper, they've both got the same sort of reach, the similar sort of angles on them and similar suspension traits to them, the Marin could be kind of cooler, just saying. Um, both great bikes though, so pick the one you like the most really and you're going to make a sound choice with either of them. Uh, both got good warranties, a similar travel, like I said, similar weight, similar specs. Polygon might be a tiny bit better for the money, Marin might be a tiny bit cooler. What's more important to you? Now this one's a little bit tricky, I actually had to ask uh, Marin Bikes about this because I didn't want to give you the wrong advice. I'll tell you my advice first, then I'll tell you what they said. So the question is, is from Johnny Janman. I've got a new full suspension, um, I would love a new full suspension bike, but funds are very limited. Instead, I'm hoping to get a dropper post for my uh, 2007 Marion Northside Trail Hardtail. I'm not a fan of posts with the externally rooted cables on the side of them, um, but the only other option would appear to be drilling a hole in a seat tube above the bottom bracket to allow a cable to exit. I'm not keen on this as it would invalidate the lifetime warranty on the frame, uh, which is a rarity to be fair. Having that warranty is a really good thing to keep hold of. Um, but I would consider it as a last resort. Are there any other options to choose from? Okay, now firstly, got to tell everyone this, you shouldn't be drilling holes in any frame. However safe you think it might be, it could be catastrophic. Regardless of warranty, you could hurt yourself. It could be really bad. Now, if you did insist on doing this and breaking the warranty and chancing it, the safest place would be 
to go in somewhere where there's already a hole in the frame. For example, on this seat tube of the bike, you see there's two holes here and they're bosses. So that's to mount a bottle cage on there. Now you could arguably drill one of those out and use that as an exit port. However, you really shouldn't mess with your frame and you're quite right in doubting that as well. So I actually spoke to the warranty people at the UK uh, Marin distributor. So this is from Johnny at Marin Bikes. So this is as straight as you get. He'll be speaking on behalf of all of Marin, by the way. He says, officially, we don't recommend doing this for safety reasons, clearly. Drilling a hole in any frame may damage the tube in a number of ways, causing the frame to fail. And of course, it would invalidate your warranty. Now, if you don't want to look at those external cables that loop around from the top, a really good one to look at would be a Transex post, which is on screen right now. It still uses cable, but a cable actually comes from the bottom of the post so you can discreetly run that along the upside, or the underside even, of that top tube. So that's about as good as you're gonna get and it'll look nice and neat, and more importantly, it's gonna be safe and it will not invalidate your warranty. That's the one to go for. Okay, next up's from a Geordi Huibertz. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Hi, I've got a white 905 bike from 2018. Sound bike that is, by the way. Um, I wanna upgrade the fork on it. The bike is a 27.5 plus with 130 mm travel but I want to put 130 mil 29 inch fork and wheel in it. How will this affect the geometry? Okay, so 27.5 plus, uh, for those that don't know, when that first came out, the plus size was actually with a three inch tire. Now that really is the standard of what it was at the time. And a lot of people loved it and a lot of people hated it. And it was a complete Marmite sort of selection there. Personally, I like a bigger wheel with a smaller tire than I would a smaller wheel with a bigger tire. Uh, I just like the way I can feel the terrain a little bit more. Now, with a three inch tire, there's only a few millimeters difference. I think it's I think it's about four millimeters difference um, between a three inch tire on a 27 and a half plus and a 29 inch wheel with a, a 2.3 tire, something like that. Of course, it's gonna vary between different brands of tires and rims because of how wide they are, the way it changes the profile of the tire. Uh, you could be here forever, but a four mil difference, if it was that sort of situation you were looking at, it's not going to be much, it's going to be less than half a degree. You'll barely notice that, so that would be absolutely fine. However, the most common 27.5 plus that you see these days will be of a 2.8 inch tire, which seems to be a much better choice because the tire is a little bit lighter, performs a little bit more like a regular tire, but you've got the benefits of having the additional cushioning. Now, there's probably going to be around 10 mil difference, perhaps even a little bit more, but Personally, I wouldn't be that put off by that. Um, I think that'd be all right, because all that's gonna do is slacken your head angle, potentially up to a degree. You think a 10 mil rise in the front end is gonna be about a degree, but it does vary slightly. So it depends on the specific tire options, like I just said. Um, I'd be willing to chance that, because I think that'd be quite good. But you'll also slacken your seat angle very slightly, so you'll need to perhaps dip the nose of your saddle down and maybe move it slightly forwards to retain that position above your bottom bracket. And of course it will raise your bottom bracket very slightly. We're talking marginal amounts here. I don't think it would be too much to try that out. Um, if you're unsure, one way to do it would be to try something similar on a friend's bike if you're able to, uh, but I'd do that. I think a 10 mil difference is, is okay. I've done it before on many a bike where I've just jumped up 10 mil and fork travel just to get a little bit more. Um, that said, with a slightly longer fork you do, you can get that back with the equivalent sag that you get. But I think you'll probably be all right. If you've got any smaller than a 2.8, if it's not a true plus and you're only a 2.6, then it will affect things a little bit too much. Um, you might need a fork that's got 10 mil less travel to retain that and then run the bigger wheel accordingly. Um, hopefully that's not too vague for you. <laughs> Good luck, whatever you do. Sound bike and a nice choice running the 29 on there. Um, I've, I didn't read this question before, I just read this directly to you, but this is from Finley Payton. He's actually a friend of mine, so he's winding me up here a bit, and he also runs full factory suspension. Firstly, he says, uh, why is Matt Reeve so short? Um, I, I don't know, he's an anomaly. He escaped through the net, let's say that one. And is there any mechanical advantage to being a taller rider? Um, I think there's probably advantages and disadvantages to being a tall rider. Um, if we look at the disadvantages, I have to duck through everything being a taller rider. I'm sure other people will say that. Um, I've suffered from backache on many a bike, regardless of how fit I may or may not be, mostly down to poor bike fit, which I've struggled with for most of my riding life until really, I think it was about 2013 when I discovered the really longer bikes that started coming in, they've changed everything. Um, so it's no longer a disadvantage. Um, I guess one of the advantages is I feel like I can crank it 
feel like I've got good leg power, uh, regardless of how fit I am. I think I have a mechanical advantage in having longer legs. But I think there's a bit of a science video in there, actually, uh, on a short rider versus a long rider. I reckon we could do something quite cool with people like Ollie Beckinsale versus Blake, for example. He's a little powerhouse, but Blake's quite compact, should we say, in a nice way. Uh, whereas Ollie is obviously an XCO level racer and there's nothing of him and he's extremely long, long limbs. A lot of those fast XC riders are very tall, so there might be a bit of a key in there. Um, we'll come back on that one. All right, next one is from Brian Miller. Hey, Brian. Uh, this is quite a long one, so I'm going to read some of this question. So my name's Brian, and years ago I was a BMX nut. It's been around 33 years since I've been on BMX, and around 26 years since I had my Trek 930 single track. I remember those very well. A neighbor had one of those, actually. Quite a cool bike. And now I've been looking to get my wife and I back into mountain biking, something we can travel to places and enjoy as a new sport. We're both a bit older, but we're in good shape. Now I want to know your thoughts on 27 and a half inch wheels um, as we're favoring, or 29ers. Now I'm trying to think this out, been a bit older, I think the 27 and a half might give us a tad more control. We live in an area that's growing in trails and have around 36 uh, within an hour's drive. Well that's pretty amazing to have that on the doorstep. Uh, we, Basically, you want the advice on the wheel size thing. Um, now, you've got to be clear about this. There is no better between the two. 27.5 and 29 inch wheels both have their positives, and equally, they both have their negative sides. So, a 29 inch wheel, just for example, is going to be quite heavy if you are at the cheaper end of the market, whereas a lighter offering would be the 27.5 at the same price point. Physically, it's smaller, so it's going to weigh less. Now, on a bike, rotational weight is what you want to be reduced or reducing on your bike in order to make your bike feel more sprightly, more alive, and basically have a bit more control. So if you've not got a lot of money, 27.5 might be a better choice for you. Now, if you're really tall, a 29 inch wheel does make a lot of sense. And it's not just about the benefits that a 29 inch wheel has as rollover, being able to get over stuff. The real benefit is the position on the bike. Now, if you were to draw a line between the wheel axles, on a 27 and a half inch wheel bike. The bottom bracket will be fairly close to that, that imaginary line that would go to the front axle through the bottom bracket and to the rear axle. You do on a 29 inch wheel bike, if you had the bottom bracket that high, you'd be way up in the air. So to keep it a similar feel and basically to achieve the same basically position on the bike, the bottom bracket is a lot lower than the wheel axle line. So essentially that puts you more in the bike and it makes you feel, um, certainly from a taller person's point of view, like you're lowering your center of gravity dramatically on the bike. Now I love 29 inch wheels and that is the main reason why, it's the position on the bike. It's not so much to do with the size of the wheels. Now it has taken manufacturers quite a long time to get the bikes feeling quite similar. Now there's been a lot of things you'll hear about with trail and offset and in fact there's gonna be a link to a video that Henry made in the description underneath this video if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But you don't need to go getting carried away with that, it's just picking the right bike. If you want a bike to feel a bit more lively, a 27.5 typically will have that feel. If you want the bike to feel a bit more stable, a 29 will have that feel. Now do take into account, like I said, your height. A taller rider, when you're on 27.5 inch wheels, you're gonna feel a little bit more perched up. It will definitely make the bike feel more agile, but it could also feel a little bit on the nervous side, whereas the 29 will have the opposite effect. Now, if you're on the smaller side, the downsides of a 29 inch wheel, oh, you might have a little less clearance between your undercarriage and that rear wheel when you're going over steep terrain. This can be a problem, and it's the reason why you're seeing quite a lot of racers trying out a smaller back wheel, like a 27 and a half on the back and a 29 on the front. So they still have some of that rollover advantage of the slightly bigger wheel, but they've got the clearance advantages of the slightly smaller wheel. So it's kind of known as a bit of a mullet setup. Um, and that could be another good option for you. Some bike manufacturers are starting to offer the mullet style setup on their bikes. Personally, I would go for a 29, but I'm tall and I love 29ers. This is nothing to do with marketing or anything. It's just simply a tall thing. I've found what works for me and that is it. I actually feel like I struggle more on 27 and a half inch wheel bikes because I feel so much higher up on them. But at the same time, if I was gonna have a hard tail, I would still pick a 27 and a half because I want it to feel super playful and agile. And you might like that coming from a BMX background. Oh, well, there we go. There's another Ask GMBN Tech in the bag. If you've got any specific questions for me about my workshop or about anything related to me and bikes, feel free to do an Ask Doddy hashtag down there. Or for any generic questions about mountain bike tech, Ask 
GMBN Tech with that hashtag, please, in the comments underneath. Uh, don't forget, give us some love, give us some thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. And if you want to find out what I did with this bike here, uh, click down here. And if you want to find out a little bit about how these things are made, click down here. See you later, guys.